David Scott, based on your public profession, your obedience to God's holy word, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. heaven are singing. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for his goodness and his mercy. Let's give our coming king the praise and the joy to him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The angels of heaven are singing God praises on the day and we here today should be singing his praises on the day for two have come to accept Christ. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Go ahead and, and start the service now with praise and worship. Anybody got a song on their heart, a testimony, a prayer? We can do that at this time. Let all of us get up at one time. <laughs> I can just start by saying that God has been good. Yeah, he's kept us all week. He's blessed us. And for that, I'm grateful. So um, I'm just glad to be in the house today. And is there anybody else? Will 
most high. Amen. That's Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise, for he is truly here, worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the glory of the sun, our God is worthy to be praised. For we do better than ever to the Lord today. We thank God for his goodness. We thank God for his faithfulness. We thank God for his kindness. We thank God for who he is. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us start with an invocation of prayer. Our God and our Father, as once again we come before you, give your name, honor, praise, and glory. Now, Lord, we thank you for the two who just went in. Lord, we give your name, praise for them. Now, Lord, we ask that blessing for this service, Heavenly Father. We ask that you bless from the choir stand all the way to the street, Heavenly Father. Be with us, guide us, and strengthen us. We thank you for our visitors here on today. Be with them as well. 
we invoke that presence here on today. For well, we know that you hold tomorrow. We thank you. We love you. We adore you. And bless this service. Bless the choir members. Bless the ushers. Bless the deacons, the deaconess, the trustees, all friends and members. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. May you stand all over the sanctuary for the first selection. Let's give this choir some love as they come for today. Hallelujah.
anything new. We are the new morning. He touched us with the fingertip of love, right in our temple, and told us to get up. He's been good. It wasn't the alarm clock. It wasn't the birds chirping in the air. It wasn't the sun coming in through the shade of your window. It was God who woke you up this morning. It was God who started you on your way. It was God who gave you a roof over your head. It was God who put clothes on your back, food on your table. It was God, and for that, God is good. And for anybody here that knows that our God is a good God, He's been good from the rising of the sun. The Lord
So blessed be your name, Lord God. We pray for this branch of Zion. But we pray for every branch of Zion, Father God, that is planted by the seed of the precious blood of Christ Jesus. And so give you the glory today, Father God. We pray for this nation. Father God, we pray for unity. Father God, we pray, Lord God, that you would draw us back together as one. Lord God, we can always have different opinions. Father God, but we ask, Lord God, that you can find, Lord God, through the thread of Christ Jesus, a binding, Lord God, that this nation will once again stand united under the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Lord God. We know this nation is basically founded on the principles of God. So, Father God, what is happening? Why are we so far away from you now, God? Father God, as we come this morning, Lord God, search our hearts. Individually, Lord God, and greatly search us, Father God. Lord God, that you will, Lord God, instill in us, Father God, what we need, Lord God, to draw closer and closer to you. Lord God, if we draw closer to you, we will draw closer to one another. Father God, so we pray for this nation. Lord God, we pray for this community, Father God. Bless the Indian County, bless Peter Spirit, bless Amelia, bless the uh, Lord God of Colonia Heights, bless Joy, Lord God, a special blessing for Chesterfield County, Father God, for you. Lord God, and we ask, Lord God, that you would let your, your healing power. Lord God, so often we just, Lord God, think about healing in our physical body. Lord God, this nation needs healing. And Father God, you are the one who can do it. We pray for the President of these United States. We pray for our truth at home and abroad. We pray for all congressional, judicial, and executive branches of the government. We ask you, Father God, that you touch those in leadership with the wisdom and understanding, Father God, to do things according to your will, your purpose, and your word. Father God, as we give you praise today, Father God, we ask you, Lord God, to touch and protect our first responders, Lord God, those who stand on the front line of the devastation that we see occurring in our, our cities and towns throughout this nation. Father God, as we give you the glory, give you praise today. Lord God, we humble ourselves, we surrender ourselves, Lord God, that you may have total control over this service today, Lord God. All we ask, Father God, is that thy will be done. And the people of God, Lord God, that as we serve you, that as we come to serve you, we will have your blessings upon our steps. Lord God, order us, Lord God, not only in here, but as we go forth out of these doors, Lord God, order our steps. And we will be careful in everything, Lord God, to give you praise, glory, and honor. Bless our pastor, Darren Hill. Bless Lord God, Sister Lisa Hill. We pray again, as always, Lord God, for the, the strength and courage and fortitude for Brother Dr. Herbert Delroy, Sister Anderson, and Sister Blaine Anderson, Lord God, and the love. Lord God, and the wisdom that they have restored from us. Lord God, we thank you for those two reigns, Lord God, knowing that you always provide. So we give you glory today, Lord God. We look at where we stand today, Lord God. We lift up our hands and you will praise the glory, Lord God. For you alone are able to do exceptionally above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works against us. So we bless you, man. We give you thanks. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice. Bless every household represented by this guy. Those who are here, those who are not. You know every deed, you know every desire that you will be done. In the blessed name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray.
Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. God will make it all right. Let's give it to Him. And He will make it all right. Hallelujah. Let's give this choir some love. We thank you for joining us for leading us in the word of prayer. Let's give him some love. We ask that all visitors will stand at this time. All visitors, you please stand. We're not going to embarrass you or anything. If you want to introduce yourself, we will be glad if you do. <laughs> we can start over here. If you can say your name and whatever you have on your heart. Happy to have y'all. 
uh, Memorial Baptist Church have joined me and saying, so happy to have you. So happy to have you. Please, please come again. Please, please come again. Let's give all our visitors some love. Then we'll have our announcements by our church clerk as she comes. Congregation, oh yeah, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place, I'm sorry. Uh, let us all stand for the congregation of uh, him at this time. Amen. Uh, turn your, your hymnal to uh, selection 279, 279. 279, very familiar. Standing on the promises of God.
On the 15th, they will have Pastor Kim White in Bloomfield. On the 16th, Pastor John Wynn and the Emanuel Worship Center. And then on the 17th, Bishop Jeffrey Reed from the Good Shepherd Baptist Church. Again, this is at the Big Bethel Baptist Church over at the Dole Boulevard in McKinney. Rocky Branch Baptist Church has sent us an invitation to join them for their homecoming. That will be on the 28th of August at 10 a.m. where Reverend uh, Robert K. Diggs will be the proclam proclamator. Uh, he will render the word. And then on the nights of revival, beginning that Monday night will be the 29th. Our very own Pastor Darren Hill will be the pastor. Uh, preaching for that night, and our full church has participated in Then on the 30th, uh, which is a Tuesday night, Pastor Lamont Hobbs and the Mount Metropolitan Baptist Church will be on board with them. And then on the Wednesday night, Pastor Carlos Jordan, Rocky Mount Baptist Church. And their theme for their revival is, don't lose heart, keep the faith. Thank you so much for making our world a little more beautiful with your kindness. It really meant a lot. Thank you, pastor and people. We really appreciate you all. Please continue to pray for us. And this comes from uh, Arthur Gaines and family. Amen. Also, United Churches has sent, sent us uh, that they're having that breakfast, um, that that prayer leadership breakfast over at Southside at Dimity High School on the 27th of uh, this month. And um, the registration starts at 8.30 that morning. There may be some of us that would like to participate in that. Various topics would be seven powerful prayer warriors uh, that would be giving different speeches. They will have a breakout session for men and a breakout session for women. Uh, there will also be a, a full breakfast for you to uh, have. And uh, you can send or contact uh, Rev Reverend Jessica Freeman who will be the speaker. She's from Mount Vernon, New York. So I have an address and a number that you may call if you'd like to. But any of these Baptist churches are part of this uh, conference. And uh, we can get the information over if you plan to uh, be a part of that. Again, that's Dinwiddie High School, August the 27th, at uh, beginning registration at 8.30. Together as we seek God, direction, and his blessings in the season of change. Your announcements are before you, and we draw close attention to on Tuesday night when we will be going to Mount Blue Baptist Church, Full Church, for uh, to be a part of their service. Then on the 15th, Mount Level Church, where they have just gotten their new pastor over there, um, Reverend Michael Spratley is the new pastor at Mount Level Baptist Church in New Whitty. And then on the 21st, we will have our program here with the Dinwiddie County Transportation Department, uh, where the buses, some of the buses will be even coming here on that day. So we're going to fellowship with them and bless them as we go back to work carrying our precious cargo. <laughs> on the 24th, our Rocky Mount will travel over to Brother Carlos Church at 7 o'clock. All services are at 7. Then uh, Reverend Collins will be preaching on the fourth Sunday here. Uh, and sitting behind me to my left. And then on the 29th, uh, as I said before, we'll go there. Uh, today, uh, as you see here, it has Hoover Green. Uh, today, he has, tomorrow will be a year that he has been in service with us since Amen. he returned. <laughs> We thank him for his diligence. Amen. And as of to, uh, this time, he's only missed one Sunday since he joined back. Amen. 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 We look at our August birthdays today, and as I see them here, as I as I call them, I want you to stand up. We're so proud of you for having a birthday in August. 
That's the best one of the year. Sister Terry Chill on the 13th will be celebrating her birthday. We say you got a family gonna stand up with you, Sis Lucas. Sis Lula Lucas will have a birthday on the 13th. Brother Roger Reese.
Nicole. Thank you for being obedient uh, to the word of God. You give up your time and your offerings. Uh, and then we have our offertory prayer by Trustee uh, Leon Williams. Amen. We ask that we ready our hearts for the reading of God's, I mean, for the preaching of God's word. First, we have the choir to come give our sermonic selection. Then, after which we have God's word to preach. Amen.
need it all. Somebody needed it. Then you and I. Giving honor to God, the Spirit of Christ that dwells in this place. We thank Him for this appointed time, this appointed opportunity to be able to preach His word on today. We give Him honor and praise and glory on today. For if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell you where would I be. I believe that's somebody's testimony on today. The reason why you're sitting where you are today is because of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Give it up to God, the Spirit of Christ in Wales, uh, to our deacons, our deacons, our trustees, our official members, and all of our visitors. I greet you in the only name that matters, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. There's a word that has already been read, uh, and I just read, I look up Verse 4, verse 4, James chapter 1, beginning in verse 4, it says, and I'll be reading from the NIV version of the Bible, it says, Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given unto you. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be unto God. The grass withers, and the flower thereof fades, but the word of our God shall remain forever. For the time that is allowed to me, I'd like to preach from the subject entitled, Growing Pains. Growing Pains. Turn to your neighbor to the left or right of you, and ask them, have you ever experienced growing pains? <laughs> Let us pray. Our God and our fathers, once again we come before you, Heavenly Father. Praising your holy and your righteous name. We thank you for yet again another day to come and stand and preach your word, Heavenly Father. I ask that you will bless this time we share. I ask that you will bless the hearers of your word, Heavenly Father. That you may prick their hearts, Heavenly Father. Those of us who are dealing with painful situations, painful moments, Heavenly Father, that you would encourage us to run on a little further. Lord of now, I ask that you will uh, encourage someone's heart that does not know you in the part of their sins, that they may come right and say, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? Regulate my mind, amplify my voice, and don't refresh. Preach through me, preach for me, preach with me. It's in Jesus' name I do pray and I thank you. Let every heart say amen. 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 And what heard you to say it again? Amen. amen. Growing pains. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we all have experienced growing pains. It's a part of life. Some pains we experience, we bring on ourselves because of the bad choices that we have made. Other pains come because of other people that are in our lives that we deal with. Then there are pains that will happen that comes out of life development. Yes, life development. But whether it's because of the bad choices or other people or life development, we all have dealt with some type of pain. The loss of a loved one, that's growing pain. It's hard to get over that. The loss of a job. You thought you was going to be there till retirement. That's growing pain. Someone walked out on you. You said until death do us part, and there's no death, and you're still living apart from them. That's growing pain. And you hurt someone, and you didn't mean to do it, but you hurt them. And every time you see them, they look at you sad at. That's growing pain. Someone hurt you. Every time you see them, you look at them side out. That's growing pain. These types of pains linger in our lives. We don't just get over them just any old type of way, but we serve a God who can help us through these times. Amen. We serve a God who can help us through the pains of our lives. Amen. Trials and tribulations of life will produce pain in our lives, but in the midst of our pain, we can still find growth 
and we can still find joy. Can I get a witness? Amen. In the midst of pain, God is best at work. Let me say that again, child of God. In the midst of pain, God is best at work. I have a cousin, a young cousin. He's my second cousin. His father and I grew up like brothers. Uh, my cousin's name is Kamani. And one summer, he's a teenager at this time, he's grown now, but one summer, he was complaining about the pain that was in his body. We didn't know what was going on with him. He complained about pain in his leg. He complained about the pain that was in his back. He would get up sometimes uh, in the morning with tears in his eye. Little 12, 13 year old boy, uh, he'd get up with tears in his eye. I'm talking about real tears. And he said, I toss and turn all night. The pain in my body, we thought something was wrong with him. All of a sudden, uh, his parents took him uh, to the pediatrician. And the pediatrician looked him over and asked, how long has he been sleeping? He said, well, he sleeps all day. He sleeps all the time, but he's restless. And when he gets up, he's crying and he has tears in his eyes. And they checked him over and everything was fine. And they did some blood work and found out that what he was experiencing was growing pains. That particular summer, he grew almost five to six inches in one summer. He was a little short something. I know teachers like uh, 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 Sister Carpenter, Deaconess Carpenter, she can, can attest to this. Because she may have a child when she was teaching at one level, and then when they come back, they didn't grow a whole foot. Can I get a witness? At least from one person. He was experiencing growing pains. That's why oftentimes our teenagers, you all think that they're lazy because they sleep all day. No, their bodies are growing. Their bodies are growing so they lay in the bed because they're tired and the body is growing. That's some type of growing pain. We all have dealt with them. The pains of our lives will cause us to grow, especially when we learn from the pain. Let me say that again. The pains of our life will cause us to grow, especially when we learn from the pains of our lives. It helps develop us. It helps mature us. It helps enhance us. I say it develops us. It matures us, and it enhances us. Mm -hmm. So you ask, Reverend, how do I deal with the pains of life? How do I deal with the growing pains of life? Mama and daddy is gone, but every time I ride past a certain place, uh, I think about that pain, the, the loss of my loved one. Uh, every time I ride past that job that let me go uh, uh, in a bad way, I think about the pain that has lingered uh, because of that. Every time I see he or she, I think about the pain that has come uh, through the situation that has dealt me wrong. So how do I deal with the pains of life, the growing pains of life? And if we're going to deal with the growing pains of life, I would like for us to consider these three things. First, we must be patient when we experience pain. That's the first point. Secondly, we must be strong when we experience pain. Third and lastly, we must ask for God's wisdom when we experience pain. Right. Yes, patient, strength, and wisdom. Dealing with the pains of life, the growing pains of life. We found ourselves in this text today. James is the half-brother of Jesus the Christ. He's writing to the 12 tribes uh, of the Jewish believers of Christ. Uh, they are scattered all abroad. This is not the James the apostle, but this is Jesus' half-brother. This was the one uh, that was writing, uh, this one of the one first uh, New Testament writers uh, probably it was written around about 50 A.D. to give you some content over the context. James calls believers not only to hear the truth, but he calls them to act on the truth. All right. It's one thing to hear what is right from wrong, but it's another thing to choose right over wrong. And many times in our lives, we know right from wrong. Mama and daddy has taught us right from wrong, but sometimes we just tend to go in our natural, in our flesh, and uh, go the wrong way. But we serve a God that can even keep us and put us back on the right path right. when you choose Jesus first. Amen. He writes about the pains of life, about the growing pains of life. James gives the people encouragement through this letter. 
Paul wasn't the only one that was writing to people, but James, the half-brother of Jesus, he also wrote to the people. The Bible says James is a slave of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You cannot get to the Father without going through Jesus Christ. Don't let nobody fool you. You cannot get to the Father without going through Jesus Christ. Jesus is our prayer team. Jesus is our go-between. Jesus is our mediator. Jesus is the one, how shall I say it, he's like our lawyer. He will fight for us. He will battle for us. Jesus is the one who sits at the right hand of the Father. He intercedes for us. You can't get to the Father without going through Jesus. That's why whenever we pray, we always uh, seal our prayers in the name of Jesus. It's not a good prayer in my estimate if you don't seal it in the name of Jesus. Jesus, that's that stamp, like you was mailing something. That's that stamp that would get your prayer up to heaven in Jesus' name. So he writes in the name of Jesus. He writes starting at verse 2. He says, my brothers, my sisters, Count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, until you, until you fall into divers temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Okay. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him, let her ask God. They give it to all men liberally. They give it to all women liberally. And brought it not, and it shall be given unto you. The growing pains of life. If we are going to deal with the pains of life, first we must be patient when we experience in the pains. Verse 3 reads, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patient. Amen. James realizes that the Christian life has trials and tribulations. The Christian life has temptations that we go through, which happens uh, uh, whenever you run up against a hard place in your life. You will deal with trials. You will deal with temptations. Right. You will deal with tribulations in our life, which happens. Uh, this walk that we walk as Christians, it's not always a bag of roses. Sometimes we get thorns in our lives. Can I get a witness? All right. All right. The believers and followers of Christ not always have thorns, uh, not always have roses, but we do have thorns. Yes. James is trying to help build the 12 tribes' faith in their endurance. And then in verse 2, he says, in the New Living Translation, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, when trouble of any kind comes yes. your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. You talking about whenever trouble come my way, I have to consider it an opportunity for great joy? James says great joys, not just any type of joy, but great joy. Right. In order to have that kind of joy, you must exercise your patience in Jesus Christ. Amen. In order to have that type of joy, only one person can give you that type of joy, and his name is Jesus. Amen. There's no type of joy like the joy that you get from the Father. There's no type of joy that you get from the Holy Spirit. There's no type of joy that you get from Jesus the Christ. Uh, have you ever experienced the joy of Christ? Right. Somebody has done you wrong, but you still have joy in your heart. Somebody has talked about you, but you still have joy in your heart. Somebody maybe has mistreated you, but you still have Jesus' joy in your life. Patience does not come easily to some people because of uh, we want things quick, fast, and in a hurry. Amen. We want things microwave style. We want things like yesterday. Everything has to be immediately. You all remember back in the day before we had microwaves. We would go to the oven, we had to turn it on, but you just couldn't put the food in right then and there. You had to wait for it to heat up a few minutes. And then you could put it in, then you had to watch and look at it and make sure it was done and brown it. Every now and then you had to open it up and, and check it and all that. But now we want things microwave. All the times we come home and my, my kids ask my mom, what are we going to eat? She just got through the door. We want things microwave style. Let mama come in and take her shoes off and gather herself before she started cooking. But no, we, we hungry now. So let me fix you a quick sandwich. That's what she tell me. I can fix you a quick sandwich because we want things microwave style. 
We want things quick, fast, and in a hurry. But the Lord would have us to be patient right. when trials, when tribulations, when temptations come, when setbacks come in our lives, when disappointment comes, when people call you everything but the child of God. Right. The word of the day is to be patient yeah. and lack and lack in uh, patience. A uh, lack of patience shows a lack of faith. Let me say that again. A lack of patience shows a lack of faith. That's right. The new Christian may struggle with patience, but if you have uh, been walking with the Lord for a while, now I do understand we have two new uh, born again believers we just took to the water. So their patience may be a, a little lacking than our patience. But for those of us who have been walking for the Lord, with the Lord for a while, we should have great patience Amen. in the Lord. You know the same God who blessed you on yesterday is the same God who will keep you on today. Right. And the same God who will keep you on tomorrow. Right. Because we serve a God that we already know his word has already spoken for us. When you were sick in your body, the Lord came and healed your body. When mama went home to glory, you know it hurt at first, but now you can think about the joy that you shared with mother, with mama. So you need to have great joy when it comes to the Lord. Right. The new Christian may struggle with it, but we that are walking and have been walking with it, we should experience great joy in our patient moments. Joy that surpasses all understanding. Right. Patient that surpasses all understanding. When things happen that you cannot control, exercise your patience right. by putting it in the hands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus right. Christ. I say when things happen that's out of your control, exercise your patience. Hand it over to Jesus, and he will take care of it. Uh, hand it to Jesus, and he will fix it. Right. Give it to the Lord, and he will deliver it. Give it to the Lord, and he will help that situation out. Has anybody ever given that situation over to the Lord, and you left it at the altar, and the Lord has handled whatever it is? He will fix it. He will handle it. He will take care of it. Right. Just give it over to our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Right. He may not come when you want him, but you're going to want him when he comes. So put your trust in God. Put your faith in God and God and watch him turn it around in your favor. He is a turning around God. Trust in the Lord. I say trust in the Lord with all your heart. And not only to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Put your hope in Jesus. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, All the right. solid rock I stand. All other ground, it is sinking sand. It is sinking sand. Right. Have patience. My God, your God, our God will give us patience. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 15 and 18, hot tempers cause arguments, but patience brings peace. That's right. Yeah. First Corinthians 13 and 4 says, love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. It is not envious. That's patience. James 5 and 8 says, you must be patient. Keep your hope high for the day of the Lord is coming near. All right. And then I love this one. It says, uh, they that wait upon the Lord right. shall renew their strength. Right. They shall bear up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Right. And in order to have that, you got to have patience in the Lord. So wait on the Lord, I say. Be patient in our God. First, when dealing with growing pains, first, we must be patient. But secondly, we must be strong. Amen. Be strong. Be strong. In verse 4 it reads, But let patience have her perfect work, and that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. James is letting the people know uh, to be patient, but also to be strong while you're being patient. All right. Let me say that again. To be strong while you're being patient. Yeah. While you're going through diverse times. While you're going through temptations. While you're going through setbacks, you must be strong. God is making you stronger whenever you're going through the going through, as they say. And let me say, 
Uh, we can't uh, really know the strength of our character until we have put on us. Russia right. Beatles' character, we need to have strength like no other. Uh, when things happen to us, it builds our strength. When people have done us unfairly, it builds our strength and All our right. character. Uh, you need to have a calm head about yourself, a cooler head about yourself when things come, because it shows the strength that you have in Jesus Christ. No, not in muscle strength, but the strength that you have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. All right. In times like these, we need to show strength in the Lord, not in man, but in our God. There's uh, no need to go to cussing. There's no need to go to fussing. There's no need to go to shoot, All right. but you can relax in the Lord and let him fight your battle. That's right. A couple of weeks ago, he says, stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord. That's right. James is letting, uh, telling us that uh, the only way to get stronger in the Lord is uh, with the pressures of life. Sometimes pressure does uh, bust pipes, but pressure will make you strong. We all have pressure points and pressure moments. And typically they come from people who are close to you. People know what to say to get up under your fingernails at times. It's nothing like getting pressure from your own home or in your own community or in your own church. Right. It's nothing like that type of pressure. When people talk about you and call you everything for the child of God, if you come from a stranger, yeah, but not for someone that you're sharing the same house with. Those type of pressures uh, uh, can, can, can lead to some fussing, some cussing, and even some shooting. Can I get a witness? Right. Children being disobedient, pressure. Co-workers calling you everything but the child of God, pressure. Family members acting crazy, pressure. Sickness in your body, pressure. Loved ones call home to glory too soon, pressure. But God gives us the ability to withstand the pressures of life. All right. In 1 Corinthians uh, 16 and 11, it says, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his pressure continually. Psalms 28 and 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield and my uh, heart, uh, and he will, I will seek him. Luke chapter 21, 19 says, Stand firm and you will win. All right. uh, the God knows uh, uh, our pressure point, but he builds our strength through the pressure points of our lives. Pressure like no other. A bodybuilder. I know Darian, I know she can attest to this, but a bodybuilder puts weight on to get strength. To get strength. The more weight they put on, the more reps they do, the stronger they get. Amen. Just like in our lives, the more things we go through, the stronger that you get. When I was young in Christ, everything used to wear me. But now when stuff comes, I don't even worry about it. I say, I know the Lord got it, because he's the same God who's in my last storm. Right. The same God who's in my present storm. Right. And the same God who's going to be on the other side of the storm. All right. Likewise, in our life, our walk with the Lord, the more pressure we will stand, the more pressure we overcome, the Lord will make us stronger for his glory. Right. That he will get the glory, not us, but that he will get the glory. God will give us an uh, assurance of his glory. All right. When we will abstain, when we will uh, sustain ourselves through his strength. Don't just uh, stand any type of way when you're standing. Stand in God's presence. Stand on God's word. Stand with his power. Stand on his purpose. I say stand. Don't just stand any type of way, but stand in his presence. All right. Stand on his word. Stand in God's power, and he will work it out. All right. He's a working it out God. God will give you power, wonder working power, yeah. power to love your enemies, That's right. power to keep on running on to the next uh, episode. God will give us strength, strength in your body, strength in your mind, strength on your relationship, strength in your finances. There's nothing like the strength that God gives us. Can I get a witness? Right. Our God is a strengthening God. And we're going to deal with the growing pains of life. First, we must be patient. Secondly, we must be strong. Third and lastly, we must ask for God's wisdom. Yes, ask for God's wisdom. 
Uh, verse 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God to give all men liberally without finding fault, and it will be given unto you. Right. James tells the followers in this letter to ask for wisdom from God. To have wisdom from the Lord is a blessing. Let me say that again. To have wisdom from the Lord is a blessing. Right. Wisdom will help us when we are dealing with the growing pains of life. Uh, we, can all, we can ask God uh, for wisdom to guide us, to direct us, to, make, to help us make those right choices whenever we ask for God's wisdom. Right. To give us that answer. And anytime we pray for God's wisdom, he is faithful to give us the answer. All right. The wisdom that we need from God uh, will turn things around in your life. According to the uh, to the study Bible, wisdom has three counterparts to it. Uh, the first counterpart to wisdom is wisdom is practical. All right. God's wisdom relates to our lives even during the most trying times. It is not isolated from suffering and trials, but it gives us a, a reassurance to overcome them and uh, the person may have profound ideas. A person may have profound ideas, but wisdom will help them put those ideas into use. Amen. Uh, many people in their lives, they know the right from wrong. They know which way to choose, but wisdom will help them choose the right direction. Can I get a witness? Amen. But also wisdom is divine. Wisdom is divine, it says. And God's wisdom goes beyond common sense. God's wisdom goes beyond common sin. It does not help us to react uh, uh, joyfully in the middle of adversity. God's wisdom uh, begins uh, in respect for God. It leads us uh, to follow the direction of God right. and increase our ability from right to wrong. Right. That's the divine part of wisdom. But also, third and lastly, it is Christ-like. To, be, to have wisdom is to be Christ-like in God. So whenever you ask for wisdom, you're asking to be more like Christ. Right. Wisdom is practical. It is divine. It is Christ-like. The Bible says so in all these things, get wisdom. Get understanding. When trials come your way, we need God's wisdom. When tribulations come your way, we need God's wisdom. When temptations come your way, we need God's wisdom. Right. The wisdom of God will make you go in the right direction. It right. will make you choose the right choice. Right. The wisdom of God will make you love your enemies. It right. will make you love those who are unlovable. Uh, the wisdom of God will direct you. It will correct you. It will stop you when you're going the wrong direction. Right. So we ask God for his wisdom. Lord, give us your wisdom. It is practical. It is divine. But more importantly, it is Christ-like. For God used and told everybody about a man. What a man. What a man. What a mighty good man. God used Christ used wisdom at the potential stoning of a woman when they went and caught her in the very act of doing something. You all know what that act is. They caught her in the very act of their stones and walked away. He used wisdom. Christ used wisdom when he went to his hometown and he, went, he began to teach and preach in the synagogue and they were astonished and said, what matter of man is this? Uh, he used wisdom. What miracles he has. What powers he has. He used miracles whenever he taught uh, to people all over the land. And the Lord will give us that same wisdom. When we are, whenever we are stuck in a jam, he will give us wisdom to get out. He will prick our hearts with the Holy Spirit. And he will tell us, no, don't go that direction. Don't do this. Don't do that or do this or do that. We need God's wisdom. Does anybody want his wisdom today? Right. Does anybody need his wisdom today? Right. When the pains of life come, we need his wisdom. The Bible also says, count it all joy. That's right. Because we serve a God who can uh, do exceedingly above all we can ask or think. So count it all joy. When pains of life come, Count it all joy. Right. When your body is racked in pain, count it all joy. All right. When your relationships 
are going far or going south for it. Count it all joy. Right. When your co-workers talk about you, count it all joy because we serve a God who will give us joy. Right. Joy in the midst of our pain. Right. Joy in the midst of our valley and spiritual. Right. Joy in the midst of anything that we may go through. We serve a God who can give us joy. And what's his name? His name is Jesus. Jesus, the rose of Sharon. Jesus, the winning of the valley. Jesus, the bright and morning star. Jesus, who hung on the cross for your sins and my sins. Jesus, they put nails in his hand, nails in his feet, and a crown of thorns on his head. But on that third day morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Power over death, sin, and the grave. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of the Lamb. So give him honor. Give him praise. Give him glory. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. I know he's all right. No more sickness because of Jesus. No more sorrow because of Jesus. No more sadness because of Jesus. No more disappointment because of Jesus. We have Jesus' joy. And with that joy, with that type of joy, we can rejoice. So rejoice, I say. Rejoice, I say, in the Lord. Dealing with growing pains, we must be patient. We must be strong. And we must have wisdom. Wisdom from God. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, people under God. Let's give the Lord a hand clap and pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Man, woman, boy, or girl, who does not know Jesus in the part of their sins, we ask that you give your life to Christ on today. There's plenty of good room in God's house. Now knowing Jesus in the part of their sins, we pray, we beseech you, that you give your life to Christ for today. Man, woman, boy, or girl, who does not know Jesus. Or maybe you've been hanging around us for a while and you want to join this branch of Zion. We would love to be your church covering. We would love to have you a part of our family that you may join this branch of Zion. I would love to be your pastor. Someone out of the office of safety, not knowing Jesus in the part of this, may want to rededicate your life to Christ on today. We ask. Hallelujah. We prepare our hearts for communion at this time. Deacons, deaconess, please give a place.
fellowship. We ask that all our new members will come up at this time. Come up. Let's give them some love as they come. Uh, I'm going to give you the mic, and you want to say your name and anything that's on your heart. So we'll start with Sister Scott. Amen. Renee Scott, I want to thank everyone for coming out and supporting Jeremy and I. Amen. And thank this church for supporting us and embracing us. Yeah. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Increase our spirit. Increase our members, Heavenly Father. Hello, meet your right hand. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. The only wise God, our Savior, be glory, be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Let us all say, Amen. 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 Yeah.